And then thirdly, the third thing I end up doing on the weekend is end up going to uh, the cause for their closing party tribes, right? One of their long standing parties that they had going on there. And um, hmm, how can I put this? It was a bit of a shit show. Not going to lie, a bit of a shit show in terms of how it was put together, in terms of the programming and stuff. It made me kind of realise that um, how difficult it is to put on nights and why I probably stopped doing it a very long time ago, right? I, I think I said to before on the podcast that my experience or my kind of history in dance music first started from being a promoter, right? Putting on club nights around East London and stuff. And then through putting on club nights, I then just had to DJ because we couldn't get enough people. Well, we couldn't pay enough people anyway to DJ. So we only could, we could only maybe pay the headliners. So that means we had to kind of fill in the other dead bits of air with ourselves or our friends who we didn't mind paying for free. And there's only so many favors you can ask friends. And again, anyone that knows me knows that I'm not that guy. I don't ask for favors. I don't even ask things in general. If I ask once, that's basically it. And I'm not going to repeat it again. So because of that, I just kind of had to learn how to figure out a dj and at first you know back then as well i didn't have a midi controller um i don't i know i definitely didn't have a midi controller so i was basically learning how to play on the night i didn't have anything to practice on because that's what that's what midi controllers are good for i think bedroom dj stuff right because if i again it's not accurate because it's not a one-for-one -one comparison with a cdj but it at least gives you a kind of an idea of how to get used to you know um moving a jog wheel um the levels on the channels um you know using a crossfader be um queuing it on what way you want to play. i mean having your cue point set it kind of gives you a rough idea on how to make it work so once you go on the cdj you can kind of be okay it's still not enough because you need to be practicing all the time but still it's better than nothing but i had none of that so i had to practice on the day which is super nerve-wracking but obviously it was good because at the time when i did my early sets so let's say between the hours of like 8 p.m and 10 or 8 p.m and 11 no one's there in it or if there are there it's just the bartenders and maybe a few other people so you get to kind of practice without people really seeing you seeing you so um that's how i got my start in dance music but promoting is no joke djing i think is hard don't get me wrong it's really difficult especially trying to come up and make your name without an agent without a booker without maybe a label without maybe a collective it's difficult to do and because it's one of the lowest bars of entries in terms of the music industry i've always said it like it's the lowest form of kind of artistic expression in music if you think about it really um it, you know think about rapping think about singing think about playing an instrument in the band think about being a producer those things you have to learn and get good at over time like djing as long as you learn how to beat match you've got relatively good taste in music you can basically be quite proficient at it very quickly in a very short space of time if you commit to it like for if you went from january to december and just focused on how to beat match be technically proficient in terms of how you mix and also develop your taste in music you're going to smash it clearly because a lot of people don't even do that a lot of people just learn how to beat match and then just play what they see on a beat put 100 so if you can actually have a taste in music where you don't actually just look at the charts and you actually listen to stuff and you go record shopping and whatnot you're going to be going you're going to go clear especially if you've got a cool look about you or you're great on camera or you've got a bit of an x factor you're going to be fine so because of that there's a lot of people that dj not a lot of opportunities but the promoting side of things is very cutthroat right to get people to leave their house to pay money to come to an event that you're putting on where sometimes the headline you're booking isn't even worthy of a headlining spot in most places but you're just putting them on because you like their music it's a thankless task man it's super hard to do then you have to program it properly how who's going to play where where what's what for you is a peak set is it 12 to 1 is it 1 to 2 is it 1 to 3 like all these things you have to kind of figure out in your head and it's very difficult to do so i don't really you know i don't begrudge the guys but one thing i've realized over the, over the years for the most part is that it's really important if you're going to do nights where you have multiple rooms to have some sort of running theme that kind of ties them together or if if, if possible try and limit the rooms you don't want to have too many because i feel like sometimes it kind of uh i won't say disperse once it disperses the crowd but it just doesn't you don't end up having that kind of collective sort of electricity running in one space it kind of disperses around too many places and then because people are jumping on at different times and playing different things it just kind of throws it off like for instance none of the, if, I, if i'm correct in thinking when i was there none of the rooms started or ended at the time they were meant to end if i'm if i'm correct so i don't or at the same time so i don't think there was like a two hour set on each room each person had a different set so something was starting i think was ended it just it just felt a bit weird so that was really didn't make any sense in that regard the crowd was a bit random too but i felt like the cause was been like that because i haven't been there in a while i've only been to this this year i've only been to the cause i think three times right 
went to tribes, went to see Tricks all night up, which again is a very specific crowd. So that's not really a good um, reflection on the cause. And what else I got to see? Who else I got to see here? Um, I forgot anyway, but I think I've only been a couple, three times. But before that, I went quite often. So I think the cause crowd is very different to any kind of other club, other club, any other club in London, which I think is what is its best selling point. But it's also a bit random right it doesn't really make any sense like there's a lot of random people there just in general which kind of throws it off a little bit um there's a lot of security there which also throws it off a little bit similar to my complaints about fabric um as great as fabric is great sound system i think in general the crowd there's pretty decent at fabric so pretty depending on what night you go to it can be anywhere from mature to like young drum and bass heads right it's just a, i like the diversity of the crowd you can just sit down on the corner and just listen to the beats in the, in the couch area like it's a good it's a good spot let's not let's not kid ourselves but the security does does kind of throw you off it does kind of you know discombobulate you when you come at the start of the doors and you have to scan your passport and then you have to go through a flipping airport security type checking you have to empty your pockets then you have to get scanned like it, it's just a lot and then by the time you get in, you're already kind of like, it's already fried you, taking you off your game. If you're on stuff, you're probably panicking. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot to get through. And I think that's what kind of makes me a little bit wary about going to this place all the time. Again, I don't have also, I don't always have stuff on me, but it just kind of throws you off when you're there because you forget. It. And then once you're on the way there, you're drinking a bit, you have another pre-drink, you may be talking to somebody on the way there, oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to see. Da, 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 da. Then you get to the door and then boom, you're confronted with all these kind of, get, you're confronted with all these checkpoints you have to go through in order for you to go in club. And I think it's a bit too much. Thankfully, once you're in the club, <clears throat> I feel like you don't really see the, <clears throat> sorry, I don't think you don't really see the, um, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> Hey fever, I feel, um, what was gonna say? Yeah, <clears throat> well, sorry about that. I'm gonna say this, yeah. Well, so once you're on the dance floor, you don't actually see the security guys as much as you see them in fabric. I think fabric has got a real big issue with that. Like once you're in there, the fab, the fabric flipping security guards are like all over you. But I feel like at this one at least, um, at the tribes closing party, at the cause, they were kind of you know as soon as you got past the gates, you're pretty much okay. But it was a bit of a mess, I'm not going to lie. Um, it was kind of hard to kind of get in the zone. So much so, I probably stayed only for a few hours and then kind of bounced, which, you know, again, very unsurprising for me. If you know me, you know that I like to go in when it opens and I'm down to the ends, you know, annoying everybody and dancing too much and chatting too much. But I didn't end up doing I ended up leaving a little bit before the, beforehand, which is, again, not, not weird because from where the place is and where I live, there's no real difference if I leave there at four, if I leave there at six, it's still going to get home like at the same time. So I should have just probably stayed until the end, but I just wasn't feeling it. It didn't really feel that right to me. And again, I think the many different rooms, the different DJs playing in different rooms, the different times they were starting, the different style, it just was weird. The only place that was good, that played, that was, I think, fine was the theatre, which I think was the main room, right? Was that the theatre? Yeah, that's it, the theatre. That was a main room. I thought that was good. I think I saw, if I'm not mistaken, when I was there, I think I saw the end of Budino and I saw Manpower Optimo and I saw a beginning of Kink for a little bit. Um, but I didn't really like the rest of the rooms and I thought it was a little bit horrendous personally for me. It didn't really vibe with me whatsoever. The music was so all over the place. The crowd was flipping bizarre. Like, I don't know, man. It's just a strange, strange place. Like, imagine just on paper, just looking at that lineup, right? Imagine seeing a lineup where you see Robert James and flipping DJ Deep or Ben Sims playing on the same lineup. Like, it just doesn't make any sense, right? It just doesn't. Nothing about that makes any sense. So I think that really didn't really resonate with it. And again, I got a lot of sympathy for it because, like I said, promoting is difficult. You're throwing a last party. Again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of context to this, right? It's the causes done a lot of great things for the community. There's a lot of money for charity. They've put on a lot of great nights. They've like I said, they're a great kind of alternative to a fold in North London. Because a fold, I guess, is very it's a very niche sort of sound. Where I feel like at least the cause they take chances with their bookings. It's not so much just like only on techno. They go all across the you know the, the spectrum of dance music, so I think that's a really good selling point in that regard. They stay up until six or sometimes five. Again, good selling point in that regard. For the most part, it's a pretty comfy club to be in, right? If not a bit sweaty, but it's a bit comfy to be in. There's different different rooms. You can always pop out into the little um, foyer bit when everyone goes and smokes and chats and whatnot. That's always nice. Um, it's a pretty centrally kind of location, so you can get back to it really easily. Um, and for the most part, every time I've been there, the bartenders for again never highlight the buttons have always been super nice there was one girl um i, I spoke to a couple of times at the bar i forgot which, which club i was in 
which is space I was in room but for the most part of the time I've been there bartenders have been super cool like really chill good banter great service just awesome which again is something not it's something not um insignificant because there's some clubs you go to where sometimes the bartenders and the staff and stuff can kind of throw you off again your game and kind of make you hate the place but those are always good but I feel like the multiple rooms the different DJs different genres just I wasn't on it I didn't feel it whatsoever again I don't expect you to be all the same but I just don't think it went as well as they probably thought it would have gone especially for your end of this is the end of tribes we're gonna go out with a bang it's like mm, it's a bit naff I thought like personally for me I didn't like it whatsoever so that was a bit of a letdown in terms of the weekend 